Hey, Chatty Patty Girl, welcome back to the media chat room where the celebrity headlines are talking. And this is one that the headlines can't get enough of. So in the words of Mr. DC Young Fly, did it bring that ass here? So your boy Diddy is in the news again and he is being sued by an ex-worker. The ex-worker in this case is someone who produced on his love album. He goes by the name Lil Rod, but his name is Rodney Jones. Now this isn't the first time that Rodney has spoken up against Diddy. Earlier this month, he announced that he wanted to sue Diddy for trying to take his publishing, which includes his Rosen contributions that was made to the love album at the time of him trying to sue diddy he knew that he couldn't afford it so he started to go fund me however that doesn't seem to have picked up a lot of traction so it seems like he's going another angle in this new 30 million dollar lawsuit the producer is suing diddy for harassment lacing alcohol and threat now what's interesting about this lawsuit is diddy is not the only one that's being sued here. the co-defendants in this case are justin cone who is the oldest son of diddy that he shares with misa hill lucian grain who is the ceo of universal music group Ethiopia have Timurim, who's the former CEO of Motown Records, who serves as the parent company to Love Records. Christina Coram, aka KK, who is Diddy Chief of Staff, and she's said to be the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs, who would be Jeffrey Epstein. Challenge Recording Studio, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Love Records, and Comb Enterprise. Now that definitely was a mouthful, and we ain't even giving to it yet. But no worries, because we're definitely about to break these headlines all the way down. So first, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and like and share the video with everyone that you know subscribe to our channel so that you can become an official chatty patty lover and i promise you're gonna love it here and last but not least turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live now y'all let's go ahead and get back on the grid even though diddy tried to take us off with this love album so rodney jones is a musician from the windy city of chicago and his music catalog is dated back from working with legendary gospel artists like the clark sisters donald lawrence and smarkin norfolk now on or about august of 2022 rodney received a call stating that Diddy wanted him to work on his love album. And his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. Now, girl, that's his words, not mine. So, girl, just thought to go ahead and relax because we're about to go through the 75-page documents that was filed with the court by his lawyer, T.A. Blackburn, whom specializes in employment law and actual harassment and assault in the state of New York. Now, if this name sounds familiar, he was the attorney who represented 11 people in the lawsuit against T.I. and Tiny in 2021 for actual assault and misconduct. Now, in this lawsuit, against Diddy is filled with lots of details and pictures, which states that he lived with Diddy from September 2022 to November 2023 while he was a producer on the Love album. And during this time, he witnessed, experienced, and endured many things than just producing. And many of the accounts that's listed throughout this lawsuit can be corroborated through witness statements, video, and audio record, as well as pictures. Now, girl, how do you think he got all this information? And you know I'm glad you asked. Because the time while he was with Diddy, Diddy required him to record him even taking his phone and recording things himself which captured a lot of illegal activity not only capturing diddy but a lot of his guests as well he claims that he can prove them distributing narcotics specifically ecstasy cocaine ghb ketamine marijuana and mushroom distribution of unregistered firearms lacing beverages to underage minors at his home in california in new york the virgin island and the retirement state of florida some of the known celebrities that are being implicated in this case is diddy the other son, Christian Cone, who he's seen actually assault and provide narcotics to women, young Miami cousin slash assistant, who he says actually assaulted him, as well as Cuba Gooden Jr., a Philadelphia rapper who had a public relationship with Nicki Minaj, as well as an R&B Grammy Award winning artist, who had an incident with the law for assaulting a Bajon billionaire, have both been seen consorting with underage girls as well as ex-workers. And girl, he even had some motifas. Remember when we was all going crazy trying to figure out why T.D. Jakes was hanging around with Diddy. Then he got exposed for being a power bot. Well, that's because Diddy actually strategically leveraged his relationship with T.D. Jakes to help soften his image and impact. His brand endured after the lawsuit from Cassie Ventura. Now, he also provides more details on the shooting that occurred at the Silas Recording Studio back in September of 2022, which was the night that they had a writing camp of which Diddy and his son Justin attended with Justin's friend G. Now, that night, there was an altercation that occurred leaving Justin's friend G shot in the bathroom after being in there with Justin and Diddy. Due to the lack of aid and attention that was given to Mr. G, Rodney attempted to help and him. was instructed by Diddy to let the police and ambulance know that he was shot outside of the studio. Due to what he witnessed and the pictures that was captured, Mr. Jones says that now he suffers from PTSD, severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Ooh, child, the next time somebody works for Diddy, y'all need to do a personal background check. So Rodney claims that he was actually assaulted and harassed by Diddy, saying that Diddy used 
used to try to touch him several times and he would work around him with no clothes on. Now these acts was actually reported to the chief of staff, KK. And she would just shrug it off like that means they did it like or it's just Sean being Sean. But whenever he would come around without clothes on, then that would be her cue to go. She like, I'm gone. And that's the exact reason why she's being implicated in this lawsuit because he says that she was aiding and embedding these behaviors of sexual conduct that was happening to him. Now along with the actual harassment and assault, there was actual grooming. And girl, guess who was used as a part of the actual grooming? Oh yes, Mr. Love and Hip Hop himself, Stevie J. Now I wonder if that's why Miss Faith Evans found for the book. But girl, let me stay on track. Now Rodney said that Diddy showed him and told him some things. In particular, he showed him a video of Stevie J giving a Caucasian man anal. Now this is pertinent information because according to Rodney, Diddy knew how much he admired the work of Stevie J. So he was trying to ease that on in along with some other things. Letting him know that it's okay because he's actually had actual encounters with Stevie J, a popular R&B singer who actually had a residency in Vegas and performed at the Super Bowl, and a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Now girl, he actually provided photograph proof from the videos that was given to him by Diddy of Stevie J having an actual encounter with the Caucasian man. So the video still exists and will be provided in court. Now girl, let's fast forward a little bit. Now he starts to talk about the incident that he had with Young Miami Cousin. The environment and setting of which he was in due to him being around Diddy because it actually happened around Thanksgiving where he alleges that she came and busted into the bathroom trying to give him oral and straddle him for X. Now I'm going to leave this on the screen so that you can read the details for yourself. We're not going deep into this part because this just shows that Diddy provided the place, not necessarily he did the X. Now let's get off into this trafficking claim. And if y'all been here for the Diddy saga, then you know that this is the same type of claims that was made in his ex Cassie lawsuit. Rodney claims that Diddy used to make him get prostitutes and ex workers. Not only did he have to get them, but he also had to partake in actual activities with them. And in order to recruit some of these women, he would make him wear a bad boy's hat. And he alleges that he could have even possibly been drugged because he had photos of him waking up in the bed with ex-workers after waking up dizzy and confused. Now these women who were ex-workers came from a place in Miami, Florida called the Booby Trap on the River. And here's the Instagram pictures of two other women who he had to recruit for Diddy. Now Rodney stated that he had absolutely no desire to solicit or have ex with any of these women. However, in the instances that he did, it was because he was forced to by Diddy by using many tactics like control and dominion over now, him. Now some of the way that he tried to exhibit control and dominion was to offer him things. He was offered a Grammy for the producer of the year for the Love album. $250,000 for him to buy all the instruments he wanted. A $20 million property in Miami, Florida. And access to some notable label executives. Now I'm not saying that this is true but y'all remember Diddy said he offered to take 50 cent shopping because he felt like he just needed some new clothes. Sound like the same script different case. Then he goes on to say that there was a listening party at Diddy House where Diddy required him to get ex-workers for him and a Grammy Award winning R&B artist who was in trouble for assaulting a Bajon billionaire. Now after he was forced to get these women, he attended the party. And when he got there, not only were the ex-workers there, but underage girls. And he was actually forced to stay because Diddy took his keys, which prevented him from leaving the event. And girl, yes, you already know he included pictures from the event with showcase and highlights. Diddy interacting with underage girls, ex-workers, along with his son Justin. Now everybody know that Diddy is notorious for throwing these parties. And at one of these parties he actually says that Diddy was grooming him to pass him along to Cuba Gooden Jr. Because Cuba continuously tries to make actual advances at him. Now girl remember at the beginning of the video when I said that Rodney was suing Diddy for threatening him. Well all of the threatening allegations are surrounded around his work and contribution for the Love album. During the course of 13 months on this project Diddy only wanted to pay him $29,000. However he was willing to settle for $50,000 publishing credit for nine songs and royalties. Diddy said, hell no. Then Rodney went on social media making it publicly known and asking Diddy to do the right thing. And this is how the threat started from Stevie J and the head of AR for Love Records, Defrost Taylor. He included the screenshots from some of the conversations that he states he's able to release because he is not under NDA. Now, although the people of Diddy's inner circle were doing threats, Diddy was letting them threats come out too. Letting Rodney know exactly what he was capable of if he did not say yes to any of his demands. He would showcase his guns and let him know that he's able to get away with some things if he had to pop out. Just like he did at the club shooting incident in 1999 where he confessed to Rodney that Jennifer Lopez was the one who carried the 
gun inside the club that he actually used to be the shooter in that incident. Although Shine was made to be the fall guy and he was able to see things around him firsthand. How some of this information could be true. As his current head of security, Mr. Fahim Muhammad is known to rap up loose ends because staff are instructed if they're ever pulled over in California or Florida to call Muhammad. And due to his connections to the police department, he's able to make things go away. Just like he did at the Chalice Recording Studio when they shot G, who was the friend of Justin. Now the music label CEO and music label companies are a part of this lawsuit because during this time when the Love album was being created, these companies were sponsors of the event, of which he said they have some level of knowledge of what was going on at these parties because the CEOs have shown up. Now girl, I know that was a lot, but we're almost finished. Now KK, who is his chief of staff, again, is being sued for aiding and abetting a lot of these behaviors and conduct. And basically he's saying that KK is the head of the Diddy Rico Enterprise. And she is the person who organized not only the drugs, but the gun and ex trafficking. Now here's the people who's involved in the organization as well as their job description. Now CBJ is responsible for recruiting ex workers and participating in free golf. Justin Combs, who is the son of Diddy, solicits prostitutes, underage girls, and ex workers. And he do a little engagement from time to time. Brendan Paul is responsible for acquiring and distributing firearms as well as the drugs needed for Diddy. Frankie Santella work on side of Brendan. He's responsible for carrying the Moolah Baby that is used for the guns and the drugs. Moy Bourne hires the ex workers and attends as well as participate in the free call. Now it's said that Diddy is able to cause all this havoc because a lot of these events are happening in his home which he actually has the footage of because there's cameras in every room strategically placed and taken care of by his IT director Jose Cruz. And the video provided to him of CVJ in a homosexual act is not the only tape there is. There's potential recordings of other celebrities, label record executives, athletes, and politicians who is being recorded without their knowledge and consent. Now, one of the things that he's requesting from the court is for there to be a trial jury. In addition to damages that he received for economic and monetary loss in the past and in the future, as well as compensation for mental anguish, humiliation, embarrassment, anxiety, pain, and suffering, and so forth. And they are also requesting a demand for insurance coverage, which means they're going for the max. Oh, that was a long one, Chatty Patty, so you already know. It's time to hop in those comments. What are y'all thoughts regarding this lawsuit against this? Is this lawsuit so detailed that you have no other choice but to believe it? Are you thinking to yourself, if he included this many photos in the actual suit, what do he have to actually present in the court? I ain't gonna lie, I'm scared to see. Because he said he have hundreds of hours recorded with Diddy and his guests doing illegal activity. And child, what do you think about all these people who was implicated in this lawsuit? Saying that they was getting their freak on at the freak off party. Do y'all think they're somewhere around here biting their nails and afraid to come out forever? Well, somebody better go ahead and queue up tell me how you gonna breathe with no L. Or do you think naming the celebrities is just a strategy used so that he can try to hurry up and settle in hopes that he could get a big payout without having to go to trial? Because baby, it look like they studied that Cassie lawsuit. Girl, leave all your thoughts and opinions in the comments, please. Because I can't wait to hear what you got to say. But before you go, make sure that you like and share this video with everyone that you know. Also, hit the subscribe button so that you can become an official Chatty Patty lover. And I promise you're gonna love it. And last but not least, turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live. Now you already know how I do it. First thing first, I'm headed straight to the comments to see what you had to say. Then it's back to getting into the headlines so that I can bring you all another video. So that's gonna be all for now. And until next time, bye-bye.